as Mr. Gurg has said, to be extremely strategic and also to the bullet point. So what I'm today talking about is renewable energies, uh, chemical industry as enabler. Before that, I think what, what I'm going to mainly talk about is the perspective which is coming from the industry as we are from the industry and also from biomaterial science, look at how we want to take this challenge further and how do we want to address this challenge. First of all, I think needless to mention, we all are aware of our challenges, but we must also once in a while look at what are we staring at. We are staring at one billion population which gets added after every 14 years. By 2050, there's going to be 66% of the population living in the urban sector. Our temperature for the land is going up, which is also a cause of a lot of these islands getting uh, drowned in, in the sea. And of course, on top of it, we have cars, which will be multiplying by four times by the year 2050. Just imagine the challenge which is there in front of us. It's good to have a refresher also once we go deep into the numbers as well. There's another challenge when we start looking at the volatility of the markets. We are looking at five times versus what was in, in last two decades between 1980 and 10, uh, 2000 year. Now, how we address this challenge from the industry perspective and also from biomaterial science, we look at three major areas for our, our interests and where we can really significantly contribute. One is renewables. How is it possible to make sure that we reduce the cost of cost effectiveness in renew renewable uh, uh, energies? Then, eco-efficient production processes. And third, energy efficiency. When we look at the buildings these days, they are the biggest guzzlers. Roughly 40% 40, 40 of the world energy production goes in the building. Is there a way we can support the, in, uh, the entire industry through these, these measures? Now, how do we address this with where we can really contribute? Wind and solar, what is the need then coming up from these sectors? Cost-efficient manufacturing. I would like to just show a very small uh, slide where it talks about we still have a grid parity or, or a delta of roughly 20%. So we from our uh, or industry are basically trying to address this 20%, whether it is through materials which could be cost efficient, whether it is the processes which can reduce the production. There can be several ways. Once this delta is reduced, then we'll be almost at the grid parity, which will help the entire industry to fly. The second most important is how is it possible to make the eco-efficient production processes. We right now are looking at our production processes to reduce the energy consumption. One of the processes within our manufacturing is the chlorine manufacturing. So we are looking at how is it possible to make sure we reduce the entire process and where we have a, a, a cathode process where, where we it helps us to overall reduce the energy consumption by almost 60%. Second, we use carbon dioxide as our raw material in the production of polyols, one of the raw materials for our business. So these are some of the things which we address. Then we look at insulation, whether an energy efficiency can help us reducing the entire load on, on the society. Now, from our own innovative perspective, we look at three areas within the wind. We use composites through our solutions inside the blade. We know the biggest challenge for blade and we are trying to get bigger and bigger in size of the blade. Right now, I, I believe uh, it, it, is, it is estimated to be roughly around 75 meters. So how is it possible to reduce the weight, the design, and make sure that it, it goes through the weatherability for the future? The second example that we have been associated for a very long time is the solar impulse. We started this project in 2010, and this basically plane is going up in the air. Normally, all the planes come down to get refueled. This is a plane which goes up to get it itself refueled. So we are looking at several areas. Is it possible to make sure, because this plane has roughly around 17,000 solar cells on top of it, so it, it is already very heavy. So we, here, we use a lot of composite to make sure the overall weight of the plane and I can tell you this plane, when I was talking to one of the pilots, it said that this plane flies at roughly 80 kilometers per hour speed. 
where the normal jet flies more than 250 kilometers per hour. So this is basically the, the benefit of a technology. We have used a lot of these materials to make sure the person who's inside the cockpit is able to very comfortably fly this plane, whether it is through uh, polyurethane foam, which goes inside the cockpit, which actually at those levels, the temperature is very low to make sure it insulates the person who's flying the plane. So these are some of the way areas where we are basically uh, trying to address the issues of, of the society. But it is not possible for us to be successful without going inside and also taking the help from the academy, uh, academia and also several people who are in the value chain. So we are associated, for example, Green Center Canada. We are also looking at several alternative materials which can go inside our formulations to make sure that we address the need of the business and also we try to address and give a solution. Now, I would like to share one very basic case study with all of you and it basically talks about how with simple solution we can we can address the issues of the society and this is one of the examples which we started from Thailand one of the universities with whom we were working we said the biggest problem for a food chain right now is post harvest losses now post harvest losses is, is not very good for a farmer so we started working is, is there a possibility to come up with a greenhouse dryer which is primarily made of a polycarbonate sheet which has flexibility to take any shape and it helps basically to dry any produce for the benefit of the farmers. So we started working with the, with the, with the university there and then we developed this solution which you can see on the screen. Eventually this model was then also given to the government of Tamil Nadu which had a, one of the major issues of uh, drying banana. Eventually it so happened that government of Tamil Nadu really took it and they started uh, through our, our help and also there was DEC, one of the German uh, funding agency. It's basically a, a fantastic example of PPP which helped the society to eventually get a lot of benefits through post-harvest losses. So eventually this has been now ordered we, uh, through with the help of government of Tamil Nadu which also helps to have a, as work as a policy enabler. We are, of course, the technology provider, but also it gives a platform for implementation and for the benefit of the farmers. This is a, a very simple example to make use and, and, and try to benefit the whole society. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much.